In this video, we're going to look at using the performance tool in Windows Server to monitor SQL Server performance. This is based loosely on exercise 1510 and 1511 in chapter 15 of the book. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is open up the performance monitor or the reliability and performance monitor, depending on the version of Windows you're running, and then actually create a data collector set. So we'll go to start, and the quickest way there is just type performance or begin typing it in the search field and you'll see performance monitor. In the performance monitor you'll expand the data collector sets and then user defined because you have to actually create a data collector set that is custom to SQL Server 2012. So I'm going to right click on user defined and choose new data collector set. Simple as that. And we're simply going to name it SQL Server Analysis. We'll go ahead and create it from a template. Now you can create it manually, and what this means is it will start as a completely empty data collector set, and it's up to you then to plug things in. Well, I can start with a template, which is actually a performance analysis template that is already going to gather important information about the server itself. And remember, anytime we're analyzing performance in relation to SQL Server, we have to understand and remember that it runs on top of Windows Server. So we need the Windows Server to be performing well. And then we also need SQL Server to perform well on that Windows Server. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create from a template and click Next. We'll use the System Performance Template. You can see that this will generate a report detailing the status of local hardware resources, system response times, and processes on the local computer. Use this information to identify possible causes of performance issues. Membership in the local administrators group or equivalent is the minimum required to run this data collector set, so that's important. You'll need to be an administrator of this local machine in order to use the data collector set. This data collector set is going to get you information on the processor, memory, and even networking in the local server. So we'll click on Next. And it's asking where we want the data to be saved. You can save it to a different location if you like. The default is to save it to the C drive, performance logs, or perf logs, and then the user, and then SQL Server Analysis. Now, in this case, it's using the variable system drive in place of the C drive. We'll click Next. And we can create the data collector set, or we can choose to run it as a different user. So if we want to run it as someone that is not the regular administrator, that will allow you to therefore log that this was run by that individual, you could do that. You can also start it immediately or open the properties for it immediately. I'm just going to choose to save and close and click on Finish. So at this point, we've actually created our first user-defined data collector set, or UDDCS. And here it is, SQL Server Analysis. Now let's just take a look at what's already in here because we started with the template. First of all, there's a trace on the NT kernel, the operating system kernel. And if you open it up, you can see it's a Windows kernel trace. You can see information about the trace session, the buffers, and the file that it's going to go into. We'll accept that, click Cancel, and then if we go into the Performance Counter, you can see that we're looking at Processes, Physical Disk, the Processor, Processor Performance, Memory, System, Server, and there's more, Network Interface, UDP Version 4, TCP Version 4, and IP Version 4, UDP Version 6, TCP Version 6, and IP Version 6. So this data collector set is going to look at both our IPv4 traffic and our IPv6 traffic if we're utilizing that. So it's really going to give me a really nice picture of exactly what's going on within my system. Okay, so the question is, how do we customize this further now so that it is very useful for monitoring SQL Server performance? Well, we're going to do that by adding performance counters. So let's go back into our performance counter and click on Add right here. And this brings up the available counters, and we have many, many different categories. If we scroll all the way to the top here, you can see we have some for .NET. We have those for active server pages and ASP.NET. We have cache information, browser information, database, database instances. So they're database-specific categories that give us various counters. If we come on down, you'll eventually see that we have the MSSQL sales instance, and then we have the MSSQL testing instance. 
And so we can actually see the individual instances. And if you go down further, you will actually see that we have the SQL agent for those instances as well. And then just the SQL agent for the default instance and the SQL server for the default instance. So I can go into my SQL server and grab counters that I might want to look at. So for example, I might choose to open the buffer manager and notice there's a buffer cache hit ratio, the number of checkpoint pages per second, database pages, and so forth. So let's go ahead and do the checkpoint pages per second, and we'll add that. We'll add the buffer cache hit ratio. And we can go on down to our SQL Server database, expand that out, and we can actually then see any active transactions. So we can monitor those. Any log growths and any transactions in general, transactions per second. We could also do write transactions per second. Now, the interesting thing then is that I'm pulling these over for notice total, all instances right here in the instance column. But you could do it for any individual database that you want to on the particular system. So instead of doing all instances and, and all databases, you can just do it for specific databases in a specific instance. So there's a lot of capability, a lot of flexibility here in how to set these up. The point I want you to see is you're going to go through and set up your SQL Server counters that you want, and then click OK. Now, if you don't know what some of these counters are or what they do, you will want to certainly do some research. You can find information at MSDN. You can get some information in the help system. But more often than not, you'll find what you're looking for in MSDN or possibly even in discussion forums online to find out more about what the different performance counters actually do for you. Now, there's one thing I personally always like to change, and that's the log file format. I usually go from binary to comma separated for the simple reason that if it's comma separated, I can easily import that into a spreadsheet or some other data analysis tool and generate reports and graphs and charts and all of that kind of stuff. So it's very useful to put it in a comma separated format. There is a command line utility that you can use to convert from binary to comma separated and vice versa, but I just find it easier myself to go ahead and store it in the comma separated format. So I'll click on OK. And that modifies my performance counters. So I now have a custom data collector set based on the performance template. At this point, we're actually ready to run the data collector set. So I'll go ahead and right click on it and choose start. So at this point, it's running. Now, how long is it going to run? Well, if we right click and choose properties on the data collector set, go to stop condition, right here you can see it's going to run for one minute. And you might want to run it for 15 or 20 minutes. You would simply change this value if you want it to run for a longer period of time. It's really as simple as that. We'll go ahead and click on Cancel here. Also, you can right-click on the actual data collector set. Choose Data Manager. And here in the Data Manager, you can change the report file name if you want to. So if for some reason you didn't want it to be just the generic report.html, you could change that. You can also go to your actions and rules and adjust, particularly with your actions, exactly when you want some type of action to happen on the folder, such as aging the data, deleting the old data in the folder, that kind of thing. We'll click on Cancel. And the report should be just about done. When it is finished, you'll have a new report down here in the report section. So if we expand that out and then expand User Defined, you can actually see SQL Server Analysis is already running. And now the report is finished. We can see we've gone back to just the cube icon here. That indicates to me that the report is finished. So I can now click on it and see my report. And here it is. So we're actually seeing the report file right here. And we'll allow the ActiveX content to run so we can see the full report. So here it's telling me how many CPUs I have, what my IO operations per second were. And my SQL Server is really not busy right now. I just want you to see what the report actually looks like when it's finished. We have a diagnostics result, CPU load is very low, disk I.O. is very low. We can look at CPU and we can go specifically into all of the processes. We can look at the services. We can extrapolate the individual services and look at any one of them. So if you want to look at the SQL Server service, you can take a look at it. We can go into disk and here we can see hot files. That means these are files that are very, very active. Uh, we've got a lot of activity on them as opposed to other files on the system. And then we also have the disk breakdown. 
And this is simply going to tell me for each disk, my read operations per second, kilobits per second, writes per second, and kilobit write. Now, we can see then what is the image that's actually doing this reading and writing, which is very useful. So that's my disk. We can also go to just the overall report statistics, and this is letting me know when was it collected, how long did it take to collect it, and so forth. So this is all the information that's in my report. However, if we close this down and we go back, you'll notice right here, there's my performance counter. And notice it says Microsoft Excel. That's because I saved it in a comma-separated format. So if I double-click on that, I can actually open it right up in Excel and see all my data. And if we click in the upper left corner here, double-click in between any of the columns, it will resize them all so you can see. So this is processor time. Here we're looking at the time. And here we're looking at the value at that time. Here's the next second and the value at that time. Remember, it's every second, so it's 46... 33 seconds, 46, 34 seconds, and so forth. And we can see then the column heads here give us the actual value being measured, percent processor time. If we scroll over to the right, you'll begin to see some of the uh, newer data that we've added in. So right here, you can see your SQL Server information. And you can see, indeed, there is some information, even though my SQL Server is just a test lab and it's not busy right now, we are actually gathering some statistical data from the SQL Server already. So this is how you can go in and look at that data. And then these are transactions per second. So if this was an active SQL Server, you could simply highlight these, create a nice line graph showing the performance in relation to transactions per second over a period of time. You can get some really, really good information out of these data collector sets. So spend some time exploring them further. And I think you'll find that they provide a lot of value to you in analyzing the performance of SQL Server.